let's talk about what the real story of Sam Bankman Freed is. So there's two stories. One is how somebody like this rises to prominence. And the other is how somebody likes this stays in prominence and then falls, right? Those are the two stories. So how they rise to prominence, the answer is they tend to have very high level connections. They tend to make connections with people who are very wealthy and very, very powerful. And many of those people are in the government. And what that causes is people to overlook very, very obvious problems with the way that these people are running their company. So Coindesk reported November 10th, 2022, about how exactly FTX was run. Shocking is a word that aptly describes the rapid fall of Sam Bankman-Fried's cryptocurrency empire. To a surprising degree, it's a sentiment that pours out from people who worked for him, people you'd think would have had a clue. How can that be? It may have something to do with a luxury penthouse in the Bahamas. That's where 30-year-old Bankman-Fried is roommates with the inner circle who ran his now struggling crypto exchange FTX and trading giant Alameda Research. Many are former co-workers from quantitative trading firm Jane Street. Others he met at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, his alma mater. All 10 are or used to be paired up in romantic relationships with each other. So you had basically a bunch of nerds who were living in a luxury condo in the Bahamas, screwing one another before they screwed their investors. This includes Alameda CEO Carolyn Ellison, whose firm played a central role in the company's collapse and who at times has dated Bankman Freed, according to people familiar with the matter. Coindust spoke to several current and former FTX and Alameda employees who agreed to talk on condition of anonymity, citing ongoing harassment and death threats due to the exchange's solvency issues. They said essentially this, it's a place full of conflicts of interest, nepotism, and lack of oversight. The whole operation was run by a gang of kids in the Bahamas, a person familiar with the matter told Coindesk. FTX and Alameda employees Coindesk interviewed said they've been kept in the dark about the events of the past week, adding that only CEO Bankman Freed's inner circle may have had knowledge that the exchange siphoned customer funds into corporate sibling Alameda. It's been radio silence from Sam, a second Bankman Freed employee told Coindesk on Wednesday. When we saw the CZ tweet, CZ would be Chang Peng Zhao, who is the head of Binance, saying Binance was going to buy FTX, we thought it was fake. But then Sam's tweet just confirmed it. Bankman Freed finally addressed employees later on Wednesday, a week after that Coindesk article talking about how they'd spent all of this money. They'd taken it out of customer funds, basically, and spent it on their own Bitcoin in order to prop up the value. Writing, quote, I completely understand if you want to step away per an internal message to employees viewed by Coindesk. Among his nine housemates are FTX co-founder and CTO Gary Wang, FTX director of engineering Nishad Singh, and Ellison of Alameda, Bankman Freed's trading business that's at the center of the current chaos and on which the Wall Street Journal reported got $10 billion of FTX customer money. The remaining six are also FTX employees. Gary Nishad and Sam control the code, the exchange matching funds and matching engine and funds. The first person familiar with the matter said, if they move them around or input their own numbers, I'm not sure who would notice. Now, things get very dicey very quickly in this story. Bankman, Fred, and Allison did not respond to a request for comment sent directly to them. Wang and Singh could not be reached for comment either. Bankman Freed's father, Stanford law professor Joseph Bankman, plays a role at the company. He appeared on an episode of the FTX podcast in August describing charity and regulation-related projects in which he was involved. So his dad was basically lobbying the government. In the Bahamas, FTX and Alameda's offices are located steps apart in a co-working compound in the Bahamas that also housed Solana developers and other crypto incubation projects. All of the stakeholders would have a hard look at FTX governance, Bankman Freed tweeted on Thursday. I will not be around if I'm not wanted. So, this is the real story, is how Bankman Freed was a crypto golden boy, how he was welcomed into the halls of power, how he was spending his cash and your cash like nobody's business on all of his Democrat friends. It's an amazing thing. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, folks, do you feel like you ever don't get the respect you deserve? Well, there's one way you can get that respect right quick, and that is established titles. Established titles is your opportunity to earn the title of laird or lady and gain the respect you deserve. All you need is one square foot plot of land in Scotland. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. In your title pack, you will be stowed with at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, plus an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. I, for example, am already a lord. I have a plot of land over in Edelston, Scotland, and here is my certificate to prove it. This is now my pronoun. Titles packs from established titles are a fun and unique gift for any occasion. There are even couples packs that come with adjoining plots of land for that special someone in your life. With your certificate, you could officially add the prefix of Lord or Lady to your credit cards, plane tickets, even your dating profiles. Plus, established titles commits to preserving the woodlands not only in Scotland, but around the planet. They have partnerships with global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to help with our afforestation efforts and for every order they receive. A tree is planted. And get this. Established Titles told me the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my exclusive link receive a plot within a few walking minutes of my own. 
over in Shapiro Stan. So depending on how many of you want to become a lord or lady, we can build our own kingdom. And from there, we only spread our tentacles outward. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use code BEN, you get an additional 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com slash BEN. Get your gifts right now. Help support the channel. Miranda Devine has a good piece over at the New York Post about this. She says, amid all the jubilation and gloating by Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer and pals over at the Democrats better than expected showing in the midterms comes a truly disturbing story, which may explain something about how they won such a curious election. Biden's second biggest donor, cryptocurrency billionaire wunderkind Sam Bankman-Fried, aka SBF, saw his business file for bankruptcy days after the election, but not before pumping $40 million into the Democratic Party to spend on get out the vote and other shadowy ballot harvesting mechanics for the midterms. The shambolic 30-year-old quant, one said to have been worth $16 billion, had spent $10 million getting Joe Biden elected in 2020. SPF's mother, Stanford law professor Barbara Freed, is a co-founder of left-wing PAC, Mind the Gap, which has raised $140 million to help Democrats win elections through the same get-out-the-vote grift. A more unlikely billionaire you could not find, and of course, his money was built on thin air. A math genius with poor social skills, SPF reportedly lived in a polycule, a polyamorous relationship with multiple people in a luxury penthouse with about 10 co-workers in the tax haven of the Bahamas, where his collapsed crypto exchange FTX's headquarters. Otherwise, he was sleeping on beanbags in his office, eating vegan fries, and according to his own Twitter feed, popping amphetamines and sleeping pills to regulate his chaotic sleeping habits. Now Reuters reports, between $1 and $2 billion of customer funds have vanished from FTX conveniently after the Democrats safely spent his money. SBF and his mysterious co-founder Gary Wang are currently being held under supervision by the Bahamian authorities. There were reports that he was going to flee to either Argentina or Dubai. He was the most famous millennial adherent of a cult known as effective altruism, which originated at Oxford University, found fertile ground in Silicon Valley, and now has gone down in flames along with him. Effective altruism, of course, is the idea that you become very, very wealthy and then you spend on a bunch of left-wing causes, and this makes the world a better place. In a NAS Daily online video, an awkward bankman fruit was featured this year as a role model of altruism for young people. Quote, Sam is not a traditional billionaire because he believes in the concept of earn to give. Next decade, he'll probably give away more than $10 million. He wants to get rich in order to impact the world and change it. SBF certainly impacted the midterms. He funded his millions into the Democratic National Committee and Democrat-friendly PACs, such as Protect Our Future and Guarding Against Pandemics. He donated to committees aligned with Pelosi and Schumer. He lavished his largesse on pro-crypto Democrats, like New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who was sponsoring a bill to lock the SEC out of regulating the crypto market. He visited the White House. He met with top Biden advisor Steve Reschetti in both April and May. Meanwhile, the media massaged his profile. He was on the cover of both Forbes and Fortune. It draws in a lot of charlatans, said uh, Warren Buffett about his product, where people who are of less than stellar character see an opportunity to clip people who are trying to get rich because their neighbor is getting rich buying this stuff that neither one of them understand. It'll come to a bad end. SPF appeared with Bill Clinton and Tony Blair at international crypto summits. He cut ads at the Super Bowl with Tom Brady and Larry David. Another altruistic venture by SBF was having FTX back a cryptocurrency donation website launched by the Ukrainian government. He suggested that essentially everybody can now give 25 bucks to somebody in a crypto fund over in Ukraine. The World Economic Forum loved SBF so much they made FTX a corporate partner. They've now disappeared that part of their page. The World Economic Forum is, of course, the place that pushes the so-called Great Reset. That's their, that is their term, not mine. Venture capital from Sequoia was a big backer investing $200 million in SPF, a lot of which he then invested back in Sequoia, whose chairman and managing partner, Michael Moritz, is a big donor to the Dems, as well as to anti-Trump hate group, The Lincoln Project, and reportedly is a neighbor of Nancy Pelosi in San Francisco. All of this is, um, is really, really shady stuff. And it gets even shadier, actually, because as it turns out, he was behind the scenes lobbying the government in order to regulate basically all of his rivals. And this is the part of the story where you get into the corporatism. So Bankman Freed had made friends with all of the best people in democratic politics. He was taking all of the money that he'd been given and he was tossing it back at democratic politicians. And then he was drawing up regulation that was very friendly to him. This is the reason, by the way, why he was undercut by CZ. Right? The reason why his company collapsed is because his chief rival looked at him and they said, you're, regulate, you're looking to regulate this industry to your own benefit and at my detriment. So what if I just destroy you? That's why this whole thing fell apart. According to the Wall Street Journal, Bankman Fried is himself facing federal probes now. He has described the decision to use customer funds as a poor judgment call, according to someone close to the matter. But this is not a poor judgment call. It was obvious what he was doing. The whole thing was basically a, a giant pyramid scheme. He was taking money into FDX, which is an, a legit service. And then he was taking that money and he was pouring it into Alameda Research. Alameda Research run by his quasi-girlfriend, who's then using that money in order to buy up the 
token coin that was backing FTX, propping up the value with the customer value, like using it twice, basically double dipping. And then meanwhile, you had him using that money in order to promote regulations friendly to him. The Wall Street Journal says, in traditional finance, regulators require brokerages to segregate customer funds from any capital they use for trading. In the wild west of crypto, the rules are murkier, except that their terms and conditions say they weren't going to do this. Alameda and, Alameda and FTX have not yet detailed what happens to the missing money. Though Bankman Fried has promised to share more information, Alameda was known to engage in risky trading strategies and was more vulnerable to volatility in the crypto markets than FTX. FTX's collapse is the most serious setback yet for crypto's wider goal to build an alternative financial architecture that could supplant the system of banks and brokers that dominates the world of money today. A brutal decline in the price of Bitcoin and other digital currencies this year led to a string of crypto firm bankruptcies that revealed loose lending practices and rampant risk taking. FTX, which advertised sophisticated risk management capabilities and gained a rapid following, was viewed as a stabilizing force. Bankman Fried was seen as a guy who was bailing out. He was like JP Morgan is what Jim Cramer over at CNBC said. Oh, he's, he's like, JP, he's bailing out Bitcoin when it starts to fail, except that what he was actually doing was faking his growth. All right, guys, the rest of the show is continuing now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into the rest of the Sam Bankman Fried FTX meltdown. It is a massive political story. Plus, Dennis Prager joins us to discuss the Rational Bible. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.